who here thinks that Kuwait is a prime location uh, in the world for food production? A raise of hands, please. Who uh, thinks otherwise? Okay, it's, uh, it's very apparent why. We all grew up, or some people did, with all McDonald's, had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and, and the farm was a cap with uh, uh, a straw hat. In China, they had another kind of straw hat. In Kuwait, we had the Uzar. So when we think of farmers, we always think of old school people that inherited some knowledge and kind of don't know what they're doing. Uh, and we're cool and the millennials. Uh, has everyone thought of a, um, a farmer being as cool as a, a space astronaut? <laughs> yeah, I think it's cooler and we're going to see why. My talk is going to be how Kuwait and Mars are actually grow buddies. We're friends, we're like this. Uh, first, before I go into uh, how we're close, uh, what's happening on our home and what's happening on the world, it's been said a hundred times, but I have to repeat it. Uh, Earth is about 4.6 billion years. If we scale that down to 46 years, humanity has been have around four hours. Uh, the industrial age, which is about like 200, 300 years, has been here for like one minute. And anyone here uh, above 100 years old? Uh, just one person? Then you're the only one above a second. All of us are less than a second year old. Uh, what that uh, minute did, uh, I'm not sure if it's clear here, but the average of the half a billion years was up and down, and then we came in 1950, whoop, double, in 70 years. What the Mama Nature didn't do in half a billion years. Uh, just a perspective. Of course, and all that entails with this production. It's just not carbon. There are other things. Uh, that one minute, um, fossil fuels were used, which are millennia of work being um, uh, done and not renewed, and we, we know how to milk them. Uh, we decimated lands and killed biodiversities all over the world by, cr uh, I'm not going to go into how, but one of them, monoculture, uh, uh, diversity uh, collapses, uh, and so many things. I think everywhere in the world, someone has a story to tell. Uh, we waste a lot, uh, including me. Uh, I waste clothes, I waste everything, I just drank for a bottle of plastic, so I'm not perfect. I'm living. I try to be. We're reducing our resources like never before uh, in the uh, history of the world. I'm not kidding. This is not sustainable. And uh, don't listen to me. Listen to the UN, because they just got two studies out saying that two, 230 and 240 are our last hope to go back from uh, Earth fixing itself. Less than a second ago, uh, this guy was born uh, very uh, intuitive and uh, nature-loving guy, which is Hamid Leclerc uh, here. Um, I was blessed and privileged to uh, be born in an environment that has every single extreme you can imagine, um, to a father that taught me a lot and had a business uh, in the international seafood trade. Um, I live between uh, deserts, deserts, I'm not saying desert. We have six kinds of deserts in Kuwait, for anyone who doesn't know, and seas. I have tidal zones. Um, uh, moons, the moon, uh, moon cycles, al -himmel, we had no loud tide. So there are so many diverse uh, environments and ecosystems I lived through on the weekends, during the week, and it was one of the best ways for my parents to get me distracted. Uh, go get us like a, a bag of tabut al which is like a muscle, and that's six hours away. Uh, go get me some carrots, that's two hours, uh, plus seven, a couple of hours running away. Um, Go get us some uh, blue swimming crabs. Whenever low tide comes, we'd go out. And uh, although we were kids, we had that innate um, environmentalism uh, touch. Our parents used to tell us, get us the crabs with the yellow thing on them, which is eggs. And when we used to get out, when you see mothers, we'd say we won't get them, because we want them to get their eggs and continue. And we were like young kids, just defying our parents. It's like common sense. In 1979, uh, in addition to Kuwait Towers being born, uh, the last known um, Arabian oryx was seen in the wild in the region, which was thought to be extinct 20 years ago. I'm not going to go into the, what used to be 120 years ago. I'd uh, suggest everyone who lives here or anywhere in the world, go look at what your past is. Ask your parents and your grandparents. You don't have to go further than that, if not through your experiences. Climate change. I grew up and I heard climate change. I'm like, what? 
we have a country that changes seasons in one day four times. I woke up in the morning and it was 16. I was wearing this um, sheepskin. And then I wore my summer dishdasha. And then like 9 a.m. happened. And then I'm like, it's too hot. I have to go back to white. Um, we're used to uh, seasonal changes in a day ever since I was young. They've been getting worse and worse. And uh, it's true that we are now champions as record world uh, heat in Kuwait. But we're used to a lot of seasons, extreme winters and extreme summers. Uh, a lot of rain, no rain. Um, uh, we had snow in Samia like last year, I think, and we have hail. Uh, tell me one, uh, one environment that is not in Kuwait. Maku. There is none. Everything. Uh, aridity, humidity, everything. And amazing sun. So uh, like, what is this climate change you're talking about? We have it every day. We've been living it. Uh, this is Kuwait two days ago after um, ex extreme rains. And then like a couple of, a couple of days later, it turns into um, an extreme thunderstorm, uh, which actually comes to you just like a movie. You just, where is the mummy face coming from it? Uh, but we live with it, and we love it. Uh, this is uh, my hairstyle with the uh, free sand facial on the beach. It was beautiful. I came back with white skin, uh, just rubbed with the sand. And this little uh, mollusk is my, my uh, childhood friend. The six hours I used to go out and catch. Uh, literally, there were so many. I would um, get, and there's, there'd be more. We'd never eat them all. My father would just cook three, and then magically, the rest would be in front of the beach house. They ran away, he says. And then go get me another bag. And when I send my daughters out now, if they come back with one that's alive, it's, they're lucky. All we see are dead ones. I remember that the, the, they had this uh, thing and, and, and tracks, and, and it, I, I, it's just so vivid. Everywhere in the world, you have someone has a story with their environment that changed. Ask your father and grandfather. So we're changing the environment. This big uh, farm, I call it, Earth, um, it has uh, one new component that's not doing the best it could for itself. Part of my insight did not come only from Kuwait. I, uh, in addition to growing as a biophile, I'd call it, the, which is Stephen Kellert's uh, label. We love labels. So I'm a biophile, which is a guy who uh, innately loves nature, and we all are. And a biomimetic, uh, which is a guy who thinks everything is solved from uh, nature. Uh, in addition to the insights I gained, uh, and when I graduated, I worked with my father. My father works in the international seafood business uh, for more than 30 years. And I got the honor of uh, joining a journey of more than 40 countries and uh, four continents. I have been in charge of, I'm going to say it, raping uh, seas all over the world, just getting tunas. Uh, and I'm talking about 10,000 tons. I have witnessed in Yemen when we opened the factory a couple, like a decade ago, a decade ago uh, cuttlefish from 10,000 or 2,000, 3,000 metric tons in one factory to a next year of, of nothing. Um, tunas just decimating. We're eating the top, middle, and now we're down to cod, and now it's the new fish. And next year, you're going to all eat catfish. Of course, in Kuwait, catfish is like, oh, it's bad, and uh, like culturally, but Spain, they love it. Uh, next year, it's going to be the end thing, because everyone's not going to have anything to eat but the catfish. Uh, I um, saw this, I told my father, uh, father, we can't depend on the wild, we need to value add or protein chains. This is the future. Uh, this thing, catching from the sea, is not going to work. I worked a year in Yemen with, uh, thank, without complaining. That was the best experience. With, I had no air conditioners. I built uh, from the scrap of processing facilities. Uh, I've been all around the world searching supply and demand of seafood and food and all entails. I have seen things that uh, would, you think there are laws in the world for sustainability of fish? There are, like in all books, but I have seen the other side. I have seen how um, quotas are, are thrown. Uh, numbers of bycatch of, of um, shrimp reach 120 kg per shrimp. That means I go out, I get one kg of shrimp, and I throw 120 kg of fish just to get this one kg. So imagine one ton of shrimp. How much did they throw to the sea if it's one to 120? 
I had to put a stop to it uh, when I saw a, a new technology, which is so easy, which is hydroponics. I came from a background of aquaculture, which has like 100 parameters for water. Uh, aquaculture was, or hydroponics was like two parameters. I mean, how easy is that? Um, I also served in uh, the Habitat Museum of Kuwait, telling the story of the beauty that is Kuwait and its uh, relationships, whether it be the Arabian blenny that's only native to us and works with the blind uh, shrimp, or um, the, the, the uh, ecosystems of plants that actually survive together. Uh, um, I came back and um, to Kuwait and I started my own uh, business, uh, trying to do sustainable things and and and. Uh, this is one of the exhibitions I was in. Um, everything was set from recycled uh, materials. We started selling things for people to grow. And then uh, the funniest thing was that everyone around us, not everyone, a lot of people were so misconceived with the idea of recycling that they used to go to carpenters and tell them, give us boots that look recycled. We actually went and got pallets and it's cheaper. It's not a fad, it's, it's a thing. Use recycled wood. Uh, we didn't sell anything. Um, what was sold was Moringa burgers. Uh, I put some Moringa and some water with some mint and I sold like 800 KD worth in a day. Uh, all day long and uh, talking about 200 uh, kinds of plants to 300 people and I sold like 10 KD worth of seeds. So that got me thinking. And this was what we did as a bye-bye to that exhibition. Uh, after the last three was a, a joint effort between me and uh, Bedr Mansour, an amazing uh, sculpturist, uh, done mostly from recycled material. It was an oxygen station of the future, where air is for sale. Uh, the, this guy, Frank, actually we called him, uh, Frank is breathing from a bottled uh, tree, and uh, his, uh, um, his chest actually breathes with solar power. So. Uh, the whole thing was about I heard nature, and anyone came in and said, what's this? We are telling them, this is what's going to happen in the future if you don't do something now. So they pledged something. Kids pledged to teach their brothers uh, to conserve energy, and along these things, we got more than 4,000 pledges, and it still keeps on going. Best use of resources. I'm going to um, imagine with me uh, now something. We're going to pack some stuff and go to Mars from Kuwait, OK? Uh, what do we have in Kuwait? We'll take some oil in a, in a couple of bags. Uh, we have extreme environments there already. Cool. So we're not going to take that with us. Uh, we'll take some technology printers. That's like an optional three things. Imagine if that colony leader that went there instructed us to turn some oils into fertilizers and distill some oil to actually burn it in a car to send the fertilizer somewhere else and then plant something and then burn some more uh, oil coming back, then feeding that to some mammals and then burning some oil again and burning oil again to come back to feed us. Um, as the crew, do you think this colony will live or last long? Okay, so why on Mars would this not last and do you think this lasts here? We're doing it here in Kuwait right now. What, do we get oil, we send it out, burn it? send something, and then burn it back in, and then burn it in the ground. And the, uh, so uh, if you don't accept it for you on Mars, uh, you're accepting it actually here. Nature has a lot of components, and they're powered by the sun to recycle fossil fuel components with closed loop cycles. Earth is a big farm with so many intricate circles. Fish feed um, plants, there's mycelium networks, and things we can't fathom. And they, they can convert, convert bioconvert energy better than we can ever ever do. So learning from them, we can actually have systems, and they are here actually, that are very sustainable and use the resources well. As seen as this artist's rendering, astronauts exploring Mars, and uh, as seen in my office in Dow Tower, uh, Kuwaiti uh, growing uh, on the 17th floor. Basically, uh, we're kind of similar, and sometimes I get the same view. Um, there are amazing lessons we can learn. This is Nebke which is uh, the hill, uh, a chain reaction that happens from a desert plant to actually stable up the ground and create a colony that survives and has been actually, if you compare, used as a Mars structure for building um, a sustainable city. And this plant is already doing it in our backyard. These are some technologies uh, I've had the pleasure of actually uh, seeing and uh, the lunar uh, greenhouse 
which is an in, uh, recycling uh, all enclosed system. And this is a farm in uh, UAE that has zero waste uh, uh, water, so it recycles 100%. Uh, this is NASA's ad for Farmers Wanted and Mars Explorers Wanted. Earth has been here for 4.5 billion years. Its lessons will never end if you want to open your eyes for them and learn and implement. Earth's explorers are actually needed to help us live on Mars. If we cannot do, if we can't live in Kuwait's extreme environment, how on Earth or in the universe will we even fathom living on the moon or Mars? So let's start with our own backyard and uh, use our resources well and get our minds together, and hopefully we'll be able to live on Mars if you want to. Thank you.